Hello and welcome to the ScholarPack Workforce Census 2020 video. In this video, we'll be looking at how to complete the Workforce Census in ScholarPack. The date for the Workforce Census is Thursday the 5th of November 2020, with a deadline of Friday the 4th of December 2020. The School Workforce Census is necessary to inform the Department of Education of staff pay bills, staff turnover and staff absences. This video outlines what data is required for the Workforce Census and shows where necessary data can be entered into ScholarPack. For the 2020 Workforce Census, to reduce the burden on schools, the Department of Education is not collecting absence data, qualification data, date of last pay review, Subject and tenure are not required for vacancy data, and data on third party support staff is not required, though data on occasional teachers is still required. The following school types will be required to participate in the Workforce Census maintain nursery, primary schools, secondary schools, maintain special schools, pupil referral units, academies. City Technology Colleges and Academy Special Schools. To access the Workforce Census, go to Admin and then Census. You'll then see the option for the Workforce Census. Click on this option and that will take you to the Census page. From here you'll see two columns, the Collect Information column and the Output Information column. We'll work through the Collect Information column first. You also have a link to the DfE guidance from here. Any issues with the census will be displayed here. First, we have the option for Workforce. This will look at all staff in scope for the Workforce Census. We'll start by clicking the All Staff Contracts button. This will run the Staff Contracts report. Here you'll be able to check all the information for all the contracts you hold. The next option is Staff in Scope. This will show you all members of staff who will be included within the Workforce Census, including whether they're an active member of staff and how many contracts they have. It will also show you which staff members will not be included within the Workforce Census and for what reason. The final option under Workforce is Staff in Scope by Post. This will show you each member of staff, how many contracts they have and how many roles they play within school. At the bottom we'll be able to see how many of these roles we have within school. Then it's time to check your 2020 vacancies. Within here we can add any vacancies that you have within school. Click Add New, the post, whether the role has been temporarily filled and whether the role has been advertised. Click Insert and this will add your vacancy. You can do this for as many vacancies you have within school. We can then add how many occasional teachers you have in on Census Day. Click the Edit button and enter the amount of qualified, unqualified and number of teachers where the qualification is unknown. If you do not have any of these teachers within school on Census Day, you will still need to add zero. Click Update once you've added this information. The rest of these options will take you to the staff group data. We'll start off with qualified teacher status. This then opens up the staff group up data and will show the present value for qualified teacher status. If we want to change any of this information, we can select either true or false for each member of staff and then click update. Click OK to confirm and then these values will then be updated. We then have the option for HLTA status. Again, we can see our present values we can select true or false and then click update to make changes.
We then have the option for QTS root. This will show the group up data in a different configuration. First, we need to select our value from the drop down box. We then select the members of staff we want to apply this to, and then click update. We can then use a group updater for contract type, start date, end date, post, role, school arrival date, destination, reason for leaving, and origin under the contract details option. We also have base pay, safeguarded salary, pay review date, and daily rate under the pay category and the options for hours per week, full-time equivalent hours, and weeks per year under the hours category. Once you have checked all of your data, it's now time to calculate your census. If your local authority has asked you to provide a partial census return, click this option here. We then have the option to take away certain parts of the workforce census. To return back to the full census, click the button again. To calculate the census, click Calculate Full Census Return. This will then show you how many errors and queries you have within your system. It will show you the error name, it will show the error number, and then what the error relates to. If you're unsure how to fix this error, Click the Error Details button. This will then run a search within our knowledge base for that particular error. You can see here we have an article for Error 70, and it gives us instructions on how to rectify this issue. Some errors will give you the option to go into the staff profile. For example, this error is for an invalid format for their national insurance number. Within their profile, we can click the cog next to their name and change their national insurance number. You will also see some data fields have been highlighted in red. These data fields are needed for the workforce census. Any changes you make within this area, click the submit button. From this page, you'll also be able to edit their contracts. Click on the black cog next to their contract and you'll be able to edit any information on this screen. Like seen before, anything highlighted in red is needed for the workforce census. To update any of this information, click the update button. Once you have cleared an error or query, you can click the recalculate button. This will then recalculate your census and get rid of any errors and queries that you've cleared. You can do this as many times as needed. The next option is to generate your official school summary. We can do this by clicking the button below. Here you will then see all of the relevant tables, including workforce modules, staff records, missing staff data, and missing contract data. We recommend that you check this summary to make sure that you have no errors before submitting your census. To print this page, right click on the page and click print. Once you've checked your details, it's then time to download the census file. But before we do this, please recalculate your census one last time to make sure that you haven't generated any more errors or queries. Once you have checked this, you can then download the census file. By clicking download, it will add the file to your downloads folder. You can then upload this file to the collect service. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it useful. If you require any further assistance, please contact your support team or you can access our documentation page. This can be found by going to home 
and then documentation.